Who wants to learn how to cut some wire? Me. Me. All right, let's go. And then, and we are also gonna feed the horses some corn that Titus grew in his field. Horses should enjoy that. Yes, they should because now they are hungry. Yes. We're gonna go see if we can find some wire in the barn. Yeah, we need to. You ready to go? Yeah, because. All right, let's go. Oh, I found it. Stan Fast and Great Heart would like some corn, and so Lazarus is going to cut this corn so they can each have half. All right. Oh, yeah, you did it. Give it to the horses. So we're going to put it in this little here. Watch out for the. Thank you. And he yeah. Okay. Um, when we're done with the machete, what do you think we should do with Put it? Put it away. Yeah, because what if we leave it out there? Put a rest and make it stuck. So if the machete is like this and the horse steps on it, it can snap in half. Right. Or somebody's foot could get cut it. So always we want to put it away and hang it on the hook. So I'll go hang it on the hook. He's slobber. What would you like to do with the corn husk here? Oh, you can put it in the stall. Got a little more corn ah. in here. I don't like this stall. I'm going to kind of throw this in the stall. Will you carry that for me? Yeah. All right. Okay, we're going to take the wire back because we're going to need it. Let's head back to the house. Okay. I'm going to run because I like running. Okay. Let's go on the, on the road now. Uh, we'll be safe because we'll we'll walk. Okay, before look both ways before you go on the road. Oh, okay. I'm gonna run. Dad, run. You want to run, boy? No. All right. Yeah. What do you have? A wire. Wow, are you so excited you got to carry that? Yeah. That is awesome. I think we should use it for a water line. Really? I wonder what we are going to use it for. Should we go ask Titus? Yeah. Yeah, let's go find out. What are we going to use this for? We'll okay, so we see how this, uh, this is, you know what this is called? What? It's called a stove pipe. A stove pipe. So if you don't have the stove pipe, the fire doesn't burn very well. This is the wood. Uh, well, that's the rain cap. Oh. Uh, so uh, what we do is see how this this can go back and forth like that. It's adjustable. So who would like to put this stove pipe in me. here? Me, me, me. Okay, you try it and see if uh, see if you can put that into mm. there. So this end goes into there. Okay. Is it heavy? Yeah. Oh my. It worked. Oh, Good. nice. Good. Okay. Um, can you reach the rain cap? Not me. Way up there. Stretch, stretch. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Now I will put the wire. Where are we okay. going? Okay. Now, if we didn't have wire, then when the wind comes, it would just fall over. Oh. So. So we're gonna tie the wire around yes. here. Yes. Okay. Oh, the post. So, uh, who would like to learn how to cut wire? I'll do it. Me. Okay. I'll do it. All right. Uh, let's come over here. I'm gonna do it. Now, we need a piece of wire. Probably about that long. Okay. So can you unroll the wire? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So you have unrolled the wire. All right. 
now. Looks like we need a piece. Uh, that's probably about the right length. Okay, you want to try to cut it right there? Yeah. What's going really on? Really hard. Push it really hard. <gasps> you cut it. Oh, wow. Good job. Nice. Oh, my. Good. That's fine, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, sometimes you don't have a wire cutter. And so I'll show you something that's pretty neat. So if you don't have a wire cutter, you can... It's called fatiguing. So you make a bend like that, and then you just bend it, and you keep bending it. You go back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Try not to hit me with that. Oh, I'm that. sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I should be more careful. Back and forth, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back. And... Hmm. Huh. The wire broke. Hey, look! It is moving before. Yep. So, uh, it's good to have wire cutters, but if you don't, if you don't have wire cutters, then uh, you can fatigue it back and forth like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you like to go put this over close to the building there so it people won't trip on it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Where do you think? Now. Just, just beside the building. Yes, thank you. Okay. Right yep. Okay. All right. Jeremiah, are you gonna help me with the wire? I can. Wait. Okay. Here. That's pretty cool. That, that's not even working. That's. We need a giant one. It's not even. Oh, oh, look, it goes all the way around. Okay. And, and then, then you just twist it. Yep, we're going to twist it like that. Uh, Lazarus, would you like to cut these tails off? Sure. I do. You had a turn, so now it's Lazarus' turn. Oh, I put it right there. Right there? Yep. Ah! Oh. Can I tug loud? Hey, good job. This is, it worked. Yes. Go put these pieces up against the phone shack building. All right. In order to go can tomatoes, what do we need to have? Tomatoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> good. So, we first we got to pick the tomatoes. And then we're gonna cut them up, and then we're gonna put them in the jars, and then we're going to put them in the canner and have a fire on the canner. Yes, yeah, so uh, who wants to go pick tomatoes? Me. All right, let's go pick them. I'll volunteer. All right. Uh, somebody can take the bucket and be careful, we don't I wanna spill take them. Take the bucket. I think Rebecca can take sure. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Jeremiah. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, Jeremiah has the big bucket. All right. Over this way, Jeremiah. Go with Jeremiah. Titus, Jeremiah. Over this way. Over this way. Titus needs the bucket that way. Do you want me to carry it? There you go. Thank you. Here, you want to come with me? Cards, yes. So if we pull the tomato just straight down, it'll rip. It'll come there and it'll tear and it'll rip. And we don't want to rip it uh, and tear that off. Um, so what we need to do is you hold it here and then like that and then it doesn't rip that so go ahead rachel I'm sorry. Oh, you did it. good job 
right? And then what happens if we just drop it in there? It'll bruise it. It'll bruise it, and then what happens after it bruises? It'll rot. It'll rot. So we put it in very carefully. We treat them gently like a little baby, like a newborn baby. We put them in very carefully. All right, uh, you all can pick those little tomatoes now. Me! Uh, now, see, one like this is not really that really ripe. Just get the ones that are really red. Sorry. So I think Jeremiah might want to eat one. That hurt. <laughs> Let's see. Are these okay? Is it really red? Uh, I think so. Yeah. It is? Mm -hmm. Would you like one? Do I need to cut it in half for him? Okay. We don't Not want you to. Here, pull, can you pull off the stem? The big ones. Uh, the stem hey, here? he got the big ones. That's fine. Okay. You're, here, you I can put it in the bucket. Hey, can I put it in the. Just do it okay. gently. Um, sure. Yes, you can put it in the bucket. Wait, you can share? Yes. Good job. Rebecca, do you want me to hold the bucket for you? Would that be easier? Yeah, I'm going to go get my boots. This is really red. That means it's really tasty. Who's had little, who's had little tomatoes? What? Who's had little tomatoes? I think those three there, do you see those three? I think those are ripe enough. Ripe enough? Mm -hmm. See the three tomatoes? We can get those three. I think they're ripe enough. Um, Rachel, do you see any that are ripe These enough? These are ripe enough. There? Yes, that one is. Further down, Rachel. Or do you see one? Here's one that's ripe enough. Here's one that's ripe enough. Rachel, do you see any that are red over there? Yeah. Why don't you go down and get the ones that are red? Oh, here's one that's ripe. Mm, yeah, no, it's okay. So, that's okay. Go ahead. Do you like this better than a tomato cage? Me too. Um, I do. Who's had little tomatoes? But a tomato cage works. Fire. Um, sticks. Wood. Oh, wood. Kindling. Well, really, we need some cardboard and paper first at the bottom, and then we need little sticks. Over that, and then over top, we need bigger sticks. Right. So, um, we can go and find some paper, scrap paper, and some cardboard. And, Caden, would you like to help to get some little sticks? Yeah. Okay. We have, um, can you take this stick and break it in half? Yeah. Okay. Where? Right here. In the, in the middle? Right here. Mm -hmm. Try it maybe over your leg. Can you put it over your knee? It's hard. Oh, it's getting ready to break. Here. It hurts my leg. Why don't you, I'll hold it, why don't oh. you stomp it right there. Okay, move over With this your foot? a little bit. Okay, now, no, use this foot. Can I try? Stomp it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, good. Can I try one? Uh, okay. Well, if you can find another skinny one. Well, I, I do like it. Okay, um, there are some more sticks up there, or we could go in the woods and get a few sticks. You want to go in the woods and get a few sticks? Or there's some right there, Rachel. You want to oh, look wait. around and grab some? That one's yeah, already there's broke. there's bigger sticks over there. Okay. Right here beside this Where bowl, Rachel. Where? Oh, yeah, there's some little ones right there. Get some over there. Yeah. You just want to throw that in there? Where's the stick? Um, so, it, when you put cardboard flat in there, it usually doesn't burn very well. So, uh, usually it's a good idea when you have... You can bring wood from over there. Uh, usually when we're starting fires, it's better to kind of twist the cardboard up a little bit. Kind of like that. Paper, you just roll it into a ball. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, everybody can take some paper and hey, just. I got one. Everybody can take some paper and just ball it up in balls and throw it in there, okay? Hey, you want to try to break this for me? 
Yeah, it's short enough. We don't need to break it. Okay, yeah. no, no. You take the stick out because we put we put the paper in, the balls of paper, and then we put the cardboard in, and then we put the little sticks in, and then we put the bigger sticks in. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. What? Makes me think of the lasagna. Are we going to make yeah. a camp? <laughs> Are we having a camp? Um, not today. Don't throw them all the way to the back. They need to be in the middle of that. Why are we having, why are we having fire for? Because we're going to put a fire in here, and then it's going to boil the water. And then we put the, the jars of tomatoes in, and then, then the heat process will make them seal. We're, so then they will not rot. Are we, are we going to eat them? Later, in the winter time, yes. Mm -hmm. Is it the winter time? No. Or we could eat them next summer. They, when once they're sealed, they will not rot, and they will last for many years. Yeah. Hey, I want tomato. Okay, Lazarus, can you please put it more to the middle? We need more paper. We need like a mound of paper like this, and then we need the cardboard on top. I if you heard my song, um the. My song, it's called Alpha Away. Yeah, you want to hear Alpha Away? Hey guys, you want to hear Alpha Away? Not right now. Let's try to work on um, lighting the fire. Let's put that ca cardboard on top and then we can put little sticks on top. Okay. Yeah. Jeremiah, do you want to put that stick in on top of the paper there? there. All the way. All the way in. Yay! Good job. Good job, Jeremiah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can bring that, Caden. Okay. Okay, who's going to start it on fire? I'll try it. Okay. You should try it. Okay. We won't be able to do it. Oh, we can. The Bible says that all things are possible to him that believe it. Hot. Hot. Mm -hmm. We did it. Wait. What? Uh-oh, it's working. Since these don't work, should we just throw them in the fire? Mm. I don't think so. We could use them for another day. Yeah, yeah but they don't work. Yeah, stick. But we could use them for another day. Like, watch, they don't work. But the next time we come, we could, and we have more, Look. and we get more. See, it doesn't work. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, it doesn't work. And these don't work either. But what? What are we gonna do with the American ones? The ones that work will keep definitely. See, they don't work. Oh, oh, wait, that does work a little bit. This is a. Uh, what is that? Kind of humid day. Okay. And sometimes it is helpful to close the door. I'm and it excited. creates more of a draw. So when when we first start the fire, we want that open. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You have to be careful. Mm-hmm. Everybody yes. stand back. No, we're not <laughs> gonna stand back. We're Oh look at that. It's starting Yay. to burn. Let Whoa. me see. Oh nice. Yep. Can I see? Oh, that's a good fire. Okay. Um, now, let's wait just a little bit longer, and then, can you go get some of those bigger sticks, please? The, the bigger sticks over there. Hot. Hot. Yeah, that would burn us. Yeah, why don't we all put this in there? Stay stay back. That would burn us. Oh, no, if we, if we stay back here, we'll be fine. How cold. Well, if we get too close, we can keep it. Hey! Come on. Come on. 
Thank you. The only thing is this There's a flyer in there. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. So, can I put one in? Um, yeah, you can put them in. going out. No, it's not. It's just in the back. See it in the back? Oh. Okay, let's wait and put more in. Shoot. Okay. We're going to shut it for a little bit. The draft will be better. It'll burn a little quicker and hotter. I'm inside and it. Then after it burns a little bit more, then we're going to put some bigger pieces of wood. So who, would like, who would like to go get some bigger pieces of wood? Me. All right. So Titus, what is this thing? This is a stainless steel camera. So you can put like 25, 30 quarts at a time in it. Um, and it does have it does have a safety feature. So when you have boiling water, a child can't pull this and get burned. Um, so it, it's kind of a child safety where you have to push up on this in order to open your spigot. Nice. Um, and uh, I bought this a few years ago for like $600, but it will last a lifetime. A lot of the canners that you see are do about eight quarts at a time. And so if you're doing a lot of canning, you just have to have your timer on. And it, it's, uh, if you can do it at, at this, this scale, 20, you know, 20, 30 quarts at a time, it speeds things up a lot. Yeah, especially with this closed fire too. Probably. One time I put a, like, uh, I put some tomatoes in here. I went, I lit a fire, and then I went to go shoot, shoot a team of mules. I came back, took them out, and it was done. So, um, we we want to boil these tomatoes for keep them at a rolling boil for about an hour. Um, so more than that doesn't hurt, but um, the tomatoes are acidic, which is a good thing. So things like applesauce and tomatoes are really easy to can. Um, but um, green beans, they recommend to do those in a pressure cooker. Um, I do have Amish friends that don't use a pressure cooker and they boil the green beans for like three hours. Um, so this is a definitely a good investment for anybody. Okay, let's put the bigger pieces of wood in. All right, um, the USDA does recommend to two tablespoons of lemon juice per quart jar, um, and that's kind of a safety precaution. Um, personally, I don't do that, and I, I have good success, but that's the USDA recommendation. All right, let's load it up. All right. The fuel. Oh, right. Yeah. More fuel for the fire. Right. So it keeps the fire going. It's working. Yep. It's exciting, isn't it? It's smoky. You're right. Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. It's, yeah, it it's would. Working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Hey, Rick. Oh, look. Look up there. Yeah, yeah the smoke's smoke coming, is out. coming out. Hey, baby. Look. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Smoke, Jeremiah. He's, Im he's too impressed with the fire. <laughs> I'm impressed with this and that fire. Yeah. There goes all the hey, wood that I chopped up. up. <laughs> what? It's gone to oh, good well. use. Actually, it's gone to good use. Oh. oh, why don't we sing that song again? What? It only takes a spark. To get a fire going And soon all those around Are warmed up to its glowing That's how it is with God's love Once you've experienced it It's fresh like spring You want to pass it on what a wondrous time this spring 
When all the flowers are not blooming, the birds begin to sing, the flowers begin their budding. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, it's fresh like spring. You want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountain tops. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. I want to pass it on. Okay. That uh, looks good. Whoa, that is a big log, huh? Do you know what puts fire out? Uh, no. Water. What you're drinking right now. <laughs> if you, we want the fire to go really fast and really hot, this is this vent will be open all the way but if you want a slower fire that's not as hot then we'll cleanse close this off most of the way so that that controls uh, you want a slow fire so uh i don't want it real hot right uh, now. if we have the jars filled up with the the um, tomatoes and then we put them right into really hot boiling water they'll crack they can crack mm -hmm. yes so we, it's okay if the water is kind of hot or kind of warm, but we don't really want to have like boiling hot water. Um, otherwise we have the risk of uh, cracking the jars. Okay, so what do you think we need to do next? Cut tomatoes. Why? Cut tomatoes. Who wants to cut but tomatoes? Me! But before right. we should cut, we should pray that God keeps us safe. Yes, nice. that's right. Mm -hmm. All right, well, this one is a little bit green, so we're not gonna cut that one. Um, so everybody can have a tomato. Jeremiah, would you like a tomato too? Okay. All right. Um, good. So, um, not yet. Not yet. Let's wait. Okay. All right. What should we do before we do something dangerous? Pray. Pray. Okay. All right. So, how? Why do we take our hats off when we pray? The Bible says men should pray with their heads in prayer. Okay, so it shows respect to God, so we'll take our hats off while we pray. All right. Father in heaven, thank you that we get to learn to can tomatoes, and we ask that you would keep everyone safe and keep us from cutting our fingers. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, is a dull knife safer, or is a sharp knife safer? A dull knife. No. No. The sharper the knife is, the more safe it is. The more dull it is, the more dangerous it is. The more you have to press. Yes, because oh, when it's yeah. dull, you have to press really hard. When it's sharp, it just kind of glides through. So if you take your finger and go like this across there, it will cut it. But if you take your finger and go across this way, it won't cut it. Okay. So with a really dull knife, it will be easy to pull your finger across. But a very sharp knife, it'll kind of catch it. So you can you can feel going across this way and I'm see. Try my knife. Yeah, you can try and see it. Is mine dull? Don't try this at home without your parents' permission, please. Yes. Is mine dull? This one here this feels not. pretty sharp. Let me see this one. This one feels a little bit more dull. So um, this if this is like too steep of an angle, that'll make it kind of dull. And then that's kind of too too shallow of an angle. So you want to have about a about a 30 degree angle. So you you go like this and then you do the other side and you go like that. And so if your knife is sharp, you don't need a serrated knife for a tomato. I 
Um, and some steel like this is a stainless steel and, um, or no, I'm sorry, it says a high carbon stainless steel, but it's, it's, it's hard to sharpen and it doesn't stay sharp very well. This one over here is a Japanese steel and it's easy to sharpen and it stays sharp better. This one here is a carbon steel and it's easy to sharpen and it stays sharp and longer. What about this, one? this one here is a like a stainless steel and it works pretty good. That one is a carbon steel and it's easy to sharpen. Um, so, all right. So, is it sharp? Yeah, it's good. All right. Um, now, what will happen if I start cutting like this? I'll cut your finger. I'll cut my finger. Okay. So let's first take our, our and go right through the middle and let's pull this stem off of there. Okay. So right, let's try to go right through the middle. Like that? Yep. Here we go. Okay. Where's so, the stem? Here. See the stem? Yeah. So see if we just pull that out. Okay. And you can, you can use a, a real knife here. Um, father, I do. His father doesn't want him to. Is it okay if I help him? Okay. I don't need help. Yes, you need help. If you don't have help, you might cut your finger. I could do this. No, you need help. Okay. Here you go. Hold it like that. Okay. Now hold it there. Okay. Now go back and forth. Back and forth. There you go. Okay. Good. All right. So once you have that core there, you go like this. See? And then like that. And then you have a little piece and we'll put it over there. Okay, you wanna try it out on this one? You guys can put it face side down, the wet side down, mm -hmm. and then it won't roll as much. If you wanna try it that way. You just cut it in fourths, like that. Okay. Try to Hold on, he's Rick. focusing right now. All right, now, okay, we put it down like that. All right, now, go like this. Okay, go ahead, Katie. And you hold it like that. There we go. There we go. All right. I want to try this one, but this one. That's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, uh, let's see here. Can Katie, you want to try the plastic knife and see how it works for you? Yeah. So yeah. back and forth. Like this? Start on one side. So start on that side. Can you go back and forth? Yeah. Right over here. Over here. Over on this side. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Like that? Yes. Back and forth. Push hard too. There you go. Good job. Wow, that's nice. All right. Do we do it again? Yep, then do it again. All right. Over right. here. Yes. And left. Mm -hmm. and left. <gasps> Look, I did it. Very nice. Like that. Thank yep. You. Do we okay. not do we do it again? Do you, do you just keep cutting them like that? Over here. Do we do it here? Yes. Yep. <gasps> wow, that looks nice. Okay, do you want to try the the real the steel knife again? Yeah. Okay. So set, see how those are all lined up like that. Now you take grab this one. Okay. I don't use that. Oh yes, you do. Okay. Now try it again. Right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I did it by myself. Okay. okay. Um, you want to? You can cut some of those in half if you want. I could. You Ooh, just want to keep cutting can, it a little bit. Can you pieces. go like that? Yep. Push on the top. Keep cutting it. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, Jeremiah. Okay. I'm going to try Jeremiah, this. go back and forth. Back and forth. I'm going to try to stick on this knife. 
I did it with this knife. I did it with this knife. I did it. Hey, where did the art knife go? I have it over here. Uh, can you cut this one? Ooh. I didn't even do it hard. I'm making more tomatoes. So what kind of tomatoes do we have here? Um, this kind. Uh, is, I actually it's called dropped Hillabilly, one. West Virginia. It's an heirloom. And then um, I need to. This Cut this is, part. Uh, I believe, a German <gasps> pink. I did it. And I believe this one is a Cherokee purple. Cherokee purple. I planted them all in the same kind of row, and I didn't mark them. Um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, the heirlooms <laughs> definitely have a better flavor <gasps> than the. Uh, oh, let, let's do it on the cutting boards. It's better to do it on the cutting board. Here, let me cut it in half for you, Jeremiah. Okay. There you go. Yep. <gasps> look at you. You've learned how to cut. Jeremiah, look. Not there. See how he's going back and forth and back and forth? That's what you need to do. It's like a little saw. I'm using like a, I'm using it like a chainsaw. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very nice. Watch this. Oh. See, see how this is kind of skinny? It might be hard to cut. You can turn it that way and then cut it again if you want. I did it. I did fast. Yep. Like this. Mm -hmm. Whichever way you want. You can also do it like this. Look. What? You're having lemons? Huh? No, that's a yellow tomato. Oh. Hey, Papa, I've learned how to cut. I know, I saw That's that. awesome. Good job. Yeah. Do they want you eating them? What? Do they want you to eat them? I think he wants to can them. So yeah, they do. Eat them all, okay? Yeah. He's just trying to make sure it's good enough to can. So He's just amazed by the flavor. I like, I'm going to eat all the tomatoes. <laughs> get a bowl. Hey, I made a chomper. Mm. It's okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> hey, look. I like this. I'm going to eat all of it. <laughs> Jeremiah's falling suit. I see. But you, know, you notice he's going for this tomato. Oh, not that one. interesting. <laughs> mm. Hillbilly but he's West. had these at home. So. Uh, Hillbilly West Virginia has is very low acid, and it's a good tasting tomato. But out of all the tomatoes I've ever eaten, the pineapple tomato is obviously very old. In my, uh, I'm so grateful because my mom put a knife in my hand at four years old. And I love to cut things, and I still do. Mm -hmm. So, this is fun, isn't it? I did it. Yes, you did it. Well, I go have this one. Oh, that one has a spot on it. Oh yes, I'm glad that you mentioned that one. So, um, sometimes when you're in the garden, you'll find one with a spot like that, and so um, you can just cut the bad spot out just cut the bad spot out and make sure that you got get all the rotten part out yeah i like to smell it yeah and like make sure like you can see that's that looks good there um but if, if you happen to get a little bit of rotten part in it then it could make the jar whole jar spoil so um but you know we don't want to waste the whole tomato if we can just cut out a bad spot so yep and if you smell it you can tell that the other half is not bad yep yep all right let's see how we could cut uh this tomato all right show me how to do it 
Like that. Yes. Yep. Oh, there you go. You cracked it. Are you gonna add salt to your jars at all? Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, um, it's a good idea to put salt in. It it it, it helps preserve it. Do you remember what Jesus said about salt? He said, "You are the salt of the earth." If if Jesus is in our hearts and our lives, then we will have an influence in the whole earth that will be a a beneficial good influence on the whole earth. But Jesus said something else. He said, if the salt has lost its savor, it is good for nothing. And so some Christians, many Christians today, are like salt that's not salty. So we can ask our Father in heaven and say, forgive me because I, I have been like salt that is not salty. Yes. Cut them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good job. All right. Isn't that look beautiful? There's red, yellow. You want me to hold that while you cut it? Next or you time. Can use half of it. Next yes. time we should cut the core out first. Um, the core. Can you explain that a little okay, bit? Okay. So, um, well, let me cut another one. So, He's gonna teach us something else. Okay. Can, can I borrow your knife? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, See, see the core, are you okay? So the, the core is where the stem comes in. And it, it's kind of tough and, fiber, and tough, tough and fibrous. So um, it's easiest if we cut the core out first. Cut the core out first and then cut it. And it's, if we cut it this way, going, going across this way, and then we go across that way. That's the most efficient way. So we're trying to dice them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That dice. Uh, core it first. That's the best way. And we'll we'll put the tomatoes into the bin, and like with this wood, I like a good thick wood cutting board because you can put it to the edge here, and then you can just you can just oh, here. Let's cut that one up first. If you have a good wood cutting board, you can just, uh, okay, Lazarus, are you ready? So, uh, I've got some Himalayan pink salt. I'd like to publicly thank the people that have sent me salt um, since this Peter Santanello video. Um, different people have sent me salt, and that's so kind of you. Uh, it's a blessing. So, I think that for the amount of tomatoes that we we're doing here, I think I'm gonna put um, probably three. Don't throw now, that my grandma, she would take um, the tomatoes and she would um, have a boiling pot of water and she would dip them in the boiling water and then that blanches them and then she'd peel the skin off and then do this. Um, so if you don't like the skin, you can do it that way. Um, my mom likes to, she has a Vitamix blender and electricity to run it. So she'll just put, she'll take the core out of the tomato and then she'll put it in the Vitamix blender and blend it up and then she'll just pour it in as juice. Um, so you have some different options. You, you know, you don't have to do it just exactly the way that we're doing it here. Myself personally, I like the skin. I think it's great. Um, but different people, you know, have different ideas. I've so. also heard you can freeze them, and then when you thaw them out, the peel comes right off. Okay, okay, good. So that's another idea. All right. Now, <laughs> this, I won. Is, I cut this is a standard quart jar here. Uh, okay. um, this is a spaghetti jar, you know, like you might go to Aldi's or somewhere and get spaghetti, spaghetti sauce. If you have a glass jar and it has a button that pops, it pops up and down, you can use it. And a lid like this, you can probably use it three different times. Um, 
now we also have a store where you can buy lids for almost any type of jar Misty yeah. Mountain. yeah we have a Amish place just right around the corner that's got lids now um, I do reuse my lids um, however this one in particular you can see it's got a rusty spot uh, when it has a rusty spot there don't use it um, you don't want it to rust through and then spoil or if the if there's a blemish in the mm -hmm. rubber yes thank you stephanie that's another point you want to examine the rubber um and so if the rubber has like a nick or a gouge in it then it probably won't seal properly so just take a minute to examine your lids and like if you have a lid on here and you like bend it when you put when you unseal it once it's bent it probably won't you know, yeah. lay flat very well. Yeah, so there's a way that you can kind of pop your lids off that won't bend them. Um, so usually I can reuse them like three times. Um, some people don't reuse them at all. That's just kind of whatever you decide. Um, this, I took a piece of cedar wood and uh, I I carved it. And so I, I call it a stomper. And so- Kind of like the Vitamix tamper. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, I've got my, um, I kind of like a, the square, um, container here. Um, and then, uh, and then you just want to make sure that you've got all all your air out of there can you, I you try? don't want air pockets in there. can i try can i try um yeah. how about maybe on the next jars or something yeah maybe so because he's teaching us right now okay you don't want to fill it all the way up to the brim, but you can get it pretty close. And then we'll put our lid on. Um, and um, I try to tighten them down pretty tight. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, you'll need one of these gizmos. So uh, after these have boiled for about an hour, um, then we'll reach down and we'll pull it out. And the water's pretty hot right now. And so we'll, we'll put it down into the water. So how many jars are we going to do in this canner? Uh, that canner can hold like between 25 to 30. Um, but uh, I think it probably would definitely, like these spaghetti jars are a little bit smaller in diameter. Mm -hmm. um, so it would definitely hold 30 of these. Um, of these, um, I'm not quite sure how much of these. So... Um, <laughs> All right. <coughs> Looks good. You all are be busy beavers. You're doing a good job. Okay, do you want to dump this in there now? Yes, but you have some cores in there. Why don't oh, you cut yes. those cores out? On the lids that get bent or damaged, I still like to use them to put food away. Yes, like if you had, let's say you had Leftovers some, or something. Yeah, or, or let's say you had some um, pecans or some walnuts or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, you can use a lid like that, you know, on a jar if, if this was pecans or something, or black walnuts or whatever. Um, another thing that you need to remember when we're canning is don't, like, hit the edge here. Like, sometimes you might, like, you might go like this on, like, a, a metal pot or something to clean off your spoon. Do not do that with this. Once it gets a nick in here, it will never seal. And also, you don't want a little piece of glass in your uh, in your food. So that's a safety precaution. Never go like that with your with your spoon. All right, I'm gonna go get a bigger scooper. So um, I've got this little cup here, and so it works pretty handy. Yes, thank you.
can you move Lazarus? Okay. So since we, uh, since that stomper won't fit in this mouth of the jar, we can push it down. And so, um, All right, we've got another one. Good. Okay. You have mine. Oh, yes, thank you, Jeremiah. That's perfect. Ooh, we needed that lid. Lid? You can keep, you can set that one down for now, and then I'll need it in a little bit. Some people recommend that before you seal it, you take a paper towel <gasps> and you wipe off the rim. Um, if you want to do that, it's a, a good safety re it's a good safety precaution. Personally, I don't do it. But uh, each to his own. Okay. All right, well, it's nighttime now. And we, the reason why we're doing it right now is because my timing was off. I should have lit the fire after, we're, after we did, put them in jars. And then we wouldn't have to be doing it right now. But anyway, my time management skills are not always the best. So we are going to put them in. Because by the time these were ready to go in, the water was boiling. Really, really, really boiling. And so if we would have put them in when it was boiling like that, they would have cracked. So we're going to put them in now. Okay. Lazarus, he, he would he asked if he could put him in, so go ahead, Lazarus. There's a grate in there, that's nice. Yes, if you don't have the grate in there, they can crack. And so it's very important that whether, whatever pot that you're you're putting them in needs to have a grate, something to yeah. hold it off. Hot. Very mm. hot. Did it burn you? No. Alright, Rachel. Here, I'll hold it. I'll hold this. Right. Hold it very tight. At yeah. the very top. Yep, like that. Very tight. And then put it in slowly. There we go. Let's see, how many do we have? One, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen. The spaghetti sauce jars are not a hundred percent a quart. They're 24 ounces. Yeah, they're 24 ounces. Three cups. Mm. Three cups, okay. So, all right, beautiful. So, <clears throat> we are going to put cap the lid back on. And we're going to put Make some more. Make the fire bigger and brighter. Yes. And nice cool. Okay. Oh, I see it now. Mm. Need more? You need more? Yeah. Fire needs air and wind to make it glow yep. brightly. There it goes. I'm going to put a little bit more wood in there. And uh, could I borrow a light from somebody? Thank you. Okay. Mm, looks good. Now we're gonna open up the 
vent here. Get some more air so it'll burn hot. And uh, all right. Wow, good teamwork. When we were looking at that fire that was burning so brightly, it made us think of the song called We Have This Hope. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this hope that Christ alone imparts. Faith in the promise of His Word. We believe the time is here. When the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Alleluia, Christ is King. We have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Yes, we have this hope. If we did not have hope in Jesus and his coming to take his children home, we would be of the most miserable people on the face of the earth. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you have provided tomatoes to can. Thank you for everyone's willingness to help. Thank you for the teamwork that we were able to accomplish today. And this these tomatoes went through an extreme heat in order to be sealed. And the Bible talks about how believers will be sealed. And help us, Father, that when we go through the, the trials, the heat of our trials, help us not to complain, but rather realize that through that heat, through that trial, you are sealing us so that we will not spoil and become rotten. Thank you for the trials that you send us that will help us to be sealed and preserved. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't hear a bang. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Beautiful. We want to be careful. Okay, hey, yeah, everything's, Good. everything's fine. In. It must have been the wood, maybe. Or that yeah, jar hit the side. Oh, you're right. The jar uh, tilted and. Oh, um, let's see. Oh, where are the grabbers? Oh, there. You don't want them on the side. It, it is better to have them uh, not touching the side, oh, from okay. what I understand. That jar is probably happy. <laughs> Back with the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're a happy family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a happy family of fifteen. So. What happens if this jar never, ever goes through the heat? It won't seal and it'll rot. It'll be rotten and horrible. Mm -hmm. So in order for the jar to be sealed, it must go through extreme heat. The Bible speaks of a sealing, that God's people will be sealed at the end of time. Are we at the end of time now? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And so there is a an extreme heat. The, another way of saying it is the time of trouble. And it will be a, a great trial that God's people will go through. But through this trial, through this time of trouble, God's people will be sealed. So this canning helps us to understand a little bit about the sealing process that the book of Revelation chapter 14 speaks of. Amen.